So next up, what we want to test on our three different storage areas of our RAID 0, BTR, FS and RAID um, sorry, SHR, PTR, FS, and RAID 1, EXT4 storage areas is multimedia playback and what the performance difference is, is between them. So what I'm going to do is I've already got the mapped network drives from earlier in our test. Now, it's worth highlighting I am recording with OBS. Consequently, there may be performance issues with regards to the recording of this when I perform the next tests of multimedia. So do factor that in. And if there is any choppy video during the course of this, it's largely going to be down to that. But what I'm going to do is have the performance monitor running there in the background. And I'm going to play different kinds of media from this NAS. Now, the same media exists on our RAID 0 BTRFS, our RAID 1 EXT4, and our BTRFS SHR. We're going to play the same media on each of them, and we're going to see how it affects the performance on this NAS, utilizing not here, but we're going to be playing the storage media, if we close that, from this mapped network drive. So for those that haven't followed, a mapped network drive here, this drive here, is the RAID 0 with BTRFS file system. And from here, we've got all of these files and I'm going to play um, some video and music files to see how they perform in terms of utilization, CPU and memory and how they compare one against the other. Once again, I apologize if this does negatively impact the screen recording throughout the course of this video. So let's go for a 720p file first. We're gonna go for this one here. This is an MPEG-4. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to do this with every single video, but from here we can get some idea of what the bit rate is at 720p. We can look at the total bit rate there, the frames per second, and they're all listed. So let's go with run to WO metadata. And we're going to be utilizing VLC. Hopefully minimize that, because what we want to see is this over here. No doubt we're getting a massive performance headache here of the file. So I know I'm looking at it running quite smooth, but I very much doubt you are. CPU utilization by the look of it, if we bring that down there, keep it nice and small. With the file almost complete, it's a 30 second file. CPU utilization hasn't seemed too crazy. It's up to about here and we'll leave that to carry on, but it does seem to have made the system hang quite a little bit there while we were checking that file. The file is finished. And we can see that whilst that video file played, let's close that, whilst that file played, memory utilization seems to be fine. Um, network utilization was pretty high, but with the highest spike points there are just over 20, probably about 22% um, percent CPU utilization at most. So once again, now we'll move up to a 1080p file. And the 1080p file, one minute, I'm just going to make a note of the previous results. And from here, we're going to move into the next file type. This is a 1080p file. We're going to properties. And from here, this one's, again, 30 frames per second, much higher bit rate this time. And it's a 22 second file. So let's get that played. This time it's opening in Windows own player. And we can have a look at the performance there. No doubt there'll be a slight catch up. Straight away, network utilization has shot up. There's the file playing. No doubt the screen recording software is having an absolute field day with that. But the spikes aren't too crazy. They're there. No doubt the file's almost complete. What we're looking at, and it's done. So again, we got that network utilization because it's a big old file. But for the most part, we saw similar performance levels to what we saw before. So again, 21, 22%. So let's move it up a gear and make our way into 4K media. And these 4K media files are pretty big indeed. With the ones that we've got here, we've got uh, this video file here that's almost half a gig in size. We'll make our way into that. That's called LG New York HDR. And again, 4K file, 25 frames per second, massive bit rate. Let's get this file playing. We're going to open this with VLC as well. Because it's a big enough file where it's going to be a problem. There's audio as well. So we might want to ignore that or at least mute it slightly. I'm not going to use my system mute. And again, I apologize if the um, 
frames per second has dropped quite dramatically for you while you're watching it. Again, the system seems to be playing the file okay. From my side, I am seeing a file that's playing. Um, it's a New York landscape there, no surprise at all. And CPU utilization doesn't seem too crazy. I would expect it to be higher, if I'm honest. But maybe it's going to play catch up afterwards so we can see that CPU utilization of playing this file. We're not transcoding the file, that's for certain. We're watching this file in its original version. And the network utilization is high, but luckily that CPU utilization is nice and manageable. Maybe if we are accessing this file over the internet and transcoding was enabled, then we might be having a much harder time than we are. You can probably hear the fans on my laptop starting to kick in as well. And you know, if we want to go one step better, we'll be able to see that how much utilization on my local machine that VLC was using, but the file is now complete. And again, nothing too crazy there during the course of that. I think it went a pinch higher at one point at 23%, but for the most part, playing those files has been pretty straightforward. So let's move into maybe a bigger file. Let's go for an entire movie file. Um, so we'll go for something with a little bit more density. And again, this is, I believe, a 720p file. It might be 1080p. Um, and no, no, it's much more than that. So this is a nice, simple, easy media file that we've played in previous videos of the World's End. Solid film, don't care what anyone says about the franchise. It's a good third film. It's a bigger file, so it is taking longer to open. And we'll leave that there while it opens it there in the background. Try and get that up there. Are we playing? Let's have a look. See if it wanted to recognize that file being played or is it going to open two different versions of VLC? I could cut this, but I don't think I will. I think I'll leave all this in. Keeps it fair and even, doesn't it? Oh, VLC doesn't seem to want to play. Let's have a look down here. Maybe cancel it there in the background. I think as VLC wants to be an absolute pain right now, so we're just going to kill VLC and do it properly this way. There we go. VLC's playing there in the background with the movie playing. Going to minimize that. No doubt the network access is going to spike up once again. And we'll leave that to do its thing. But again, no real performance differences right now. If I skip forward into the film, um, it's a carry on there and it's skip forward there towards the end of it. But Again, no inherent problems there overall. There definitely was a higher spike with the larger file, with that spike coming in probably closer to 30% this time. Um, they're almost, you know, just on the cusp. But for now, let's conduct another test, this time utilizing um, one of the other areas. So this time, we're going to make our way into that B B T R F S S H R volume and conduct the same sort of test. So once again, we're going to close that, get the performance monitor open there, and we're going to start playing some of those files. Not that folder, that's from the previous test. And we'll go into that 720p and run that first file once again. We've got our cityscape, we're going to minimize it. Still running there in the background though. And again, it's worth highlighting that it does look straight away that CPU utilization definitely went up with the SHR in BTRFS, with it arriving straight away at about 25%, something that was not clear in the previous test of 720p. I know the results seem very, very small there with the video almost done, but it's still a bigger spike than I would have expected. Hopefully that's just a blip and a one-off, but we'll find out during the 1080p tests. See if we make our way into the 1080p files, and we're gonna go into that big file again. Uh, we're gonna let it run with Windows own media player again. Again, just as clear my side. I'm hoping you can see it just as clear, but I can appreciate that with screen recording, that may well not be the case. And we're seeing that CPU utilization kind of sit neatly at 20% again. It does still seem to be using a percent or two more 
than that of the RAID 0 and BTRFS. And whether that is because of the architecture of the storage environment or because of BTRFS, it's hard to make clear. But with the CPU utilization capping at 20, overall, it's arguable with a few seconds left on the clock that it's utilizing the same as its predecessor there. The network spike has ended because the whole file was accessed. And in fact, it's pretty much identical to that of its predecessor, maybe even a pinch lower on the second round of tests. So we'll close that and make our way into the third test. And from here, we'll go into those 4K samples and we'll get the New York sample up and running. Let's see if VLC wants to play the game this time. And it does. Let it load up that half a gig file there in the background and leave that running there in the bar. There's our spike of network access. And now we'll see how the CPU deals with this 4K file. Now, the previous device got up to 23%, the previous storage volume, with this device getting somewhere close, I'd say, given that this point here is 30%. Each of these bars represent 20%. Um, and I'd say it's comparable. I know that doesn't seem like a huge surprise, but I would argue it is using a little bit more. Maybe it's somewhere around 27%, uh, give or take, maybe even 28 But CPU utilization has definitely been higher with regards to playback on that 4K file by comparison. So I'm going to shut VLC now, and we're going to do that final test there of the movie. So we'll make our way into movies, and once again, the world's end. Let's hope VLC isn't going to betray me. There's VLC there. And again, OBS seemingly still seems to be recording, but CPU utilization is definitely creeping up there. And straight away, we've I've noticed here this spike. That is the highest spike we've seen so far at 40%. Um, that is a spike that was not present. Um, in the previous section of test. Now, that could be a one-off if we skip forward there, just like we did before. Um, but CPU utilization has definitely been higher there with that one. And I know I'm doing very brief tests, and a lot of you, if you want to do more extensive tests than this, by all means, um, I am going to have to try and keep this a little short uh, for this series of videos. I'm going to make my way into the third series of tests. But right now, just looking at my results, RAID 0 and BTRFS definitely outperformed overall. So, finally, we're going to go into that RAID 1 with EXT4. So, from here, we're going to close the performance viewer, open that up again, get the resource monitor open, make our way in, and again, we're going to start with our 720p file with VLC. Make our way in, leave the file playing there in the background of that city skyline, minimize it. Now, the RAID 0 BTRFS got 22%. The SHR BTRFS went to 25%. And this one is sitting, I'd say, at a nice tidy 21%. So right now, BTRFS SHR, only marginally, it's a very tiny kind of scope we're looking at here. But there's no denying it that the spike was noticeably higher on the SHR BTRFS to begin with. So let's go with the 1080p tests. Go here, make our way in, and we'll open that with the Windows player. And again, 20 odd seconds. Let's have a look how this deals with. And the RAID 0 BTRFS got to 21%. The SHR BTRFS actually pipped it at 20%. And this time, the resource monitor is indicating that it's 27, maybe even 28% utilization at the initial playback of that. So we'll put that at 27, 28 for now. And I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed there. I expected the RAID 1 EXT4 to be a little better. But, you know, a test is a test is a test. Now, more extensive testing, of course. If I was running tests of files that were hours long over a period of time, and maybe for another video and I've got more time, and maybe not for YouTube, maybe for FNAFs compares, I might have to do that. But right now, things are indicating very um, interesting results there. So now we're going to make our way into the 4K test, and we're going to see how our RAID 1 with EXT4 deals with this. Show me the skyline of New York. 
hopefully, eventually, show me the skyline. Good, it's showing on my side. I don't know if it's showing on yours. Um, but the resource monitor is already starting to creep up there and get that utilization up and running. So have a look. One of the things I'm looking forward to with DSM-7 is a far better resource monitor. They've got it promised, but what I think we'll do now is have a look at those results. And it has outperformed right now the SHR, but is on par with that RAID 0 at just 21%. Not too shabby. So we'll close that down and we'll make our way into the final test. The final test, of course, is going to be that movie test. We're going to make our way into there. Open it up with VLC. And we're going to have a look how the RAID 1 with EXT4 deals with this. Now, at the end of this test, just as a little extra, I am going to do one final archive test before I start ripping the storage volumes apart for the final stage of these videos. But I left that there. VLC looks like it didn't want to play again. So let's get that storage monitor open, get rid of VLC again. And we'll try that. VLC is going to play that movie there. We'll see what the performance difference is. Now, once again, the RAID 0 at 30%, the SHR at 40%, and this RAID 1, we're going to see if it lives somewhere in the middle. Uh, we're going to give it just a few minutes, a uh, few bits of time longer. We can't see the buffering, unfortunately, on this. I know if we go to about here, we're going to see buffering, but if we go to there, we are still seeing... Uh, performance there and still seeing a great deal of sharpness at least from my side but what's quite interesting while I'm doing this is the performance spike is still only 19% at its very oh no not maybe at the highest I'd say that's probably about 23% which makes it right now the lowest um, CPU utilizing um, benchmark here of the three now it's worth noting that I haven't been keeping an eye on memory and hopefully and uh, when I'm reviewing this footage for the video here for YouTube, I'll have a look at this memory utilization, see if there's any difference. But in theory, there shouldn't have been a great deal of difference because we're still utilizing the same files, which are still going to be small enough that these shouldn't worry. But a final test I want to do just before wrapping things up is just to do with archiving.